Well, hello again, everybody. This is John Norris at Trading Perspectives. As always, we have our good friend Sam Clement. Sam, say hello. How are you doing, John? Sam, I'm doing fantastically, and I hope you are. I'm doing great. You know, Sam, last Friday night, Beth and I, my wife, uh, went out to dinner with another couple, good friends of ours, and we went to a place, and I don't mind if they use this as a commercial or not, place here in downtown Birmingham on the south side called Current Charcoal Grill. I got to tell you, it's one of the best meals, if not the best meal I've ever had in Birmingham. is absolutely phenomenal. I told you about that yesterday. The service was good. All of it. It was a delicious meal. Absolutely fantastic. But it wasn't cheap. You know, it wasn't cheap at all. I mean, it was something that you're not going to do every night for dinner. But, you know, every now and again, it's nice, nice to, go to out. do it. Nice to go out and have a nice meal. Now, conversely, last night, Tuesday night, um, I came home and, you know, I do a lot of the cooking and that's fine. I like to do it. I also like to be in control of what we eat. Mm-hmm. Truthfully, that's a huge part of the reason why I do all, most of the cooking. And the previous night I'd made a cottage or shepherd's pie and there was plenty of it left over. And I just told Beth, again, my wife, that, hey, we're either going to have leftovers or we're going to go out to dinner. Which one do you want to do? And she goes, where are you thinking? And I said, Probably not current charcoal not grill again. Not current charcoal grill again, but I said, you know, I don't know, someplace like Hamburger Heaven or or, or Saul's Juke Joint or just someplace, go in and grab some. She goes, nah, nah, let's, let's just, uh, let's just eat in. Yeah. And I'll just have leftovers. Nothing against Hamburger Heaven and nothing against uh, Saul's Juke Joint. We will go there on occasion. It's good and food. Uh, it's decent food and all that stuff. But it wasn't the enticement to go out to eat, if you catch my drift, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, so, and I, I found myself wondering yesterday afternoon, last night, this morning, when we agreed that we would be talking about this topic, am I part of the trend that's going on in restaurants? Because when I take a look at what's going on in restaurants right now, I see. Fine dining is doing okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, The sort of the upscale, fast, casual maybe is doing reasonably well with some exceptions. But that kind of lower end stuff that's sort of like what used to be called fast food, they now have fancy names for it. That seems to be really getting rocked. It's it's real hit or miss, I think, is a good word to use for that low end. And it begs the question, is this a good thing is this a bad thing i mean obviously when people are losing their jobs that part of it is not a good thing but you take that out of the equation and is it good that we're now having to have these higher standards or you're having to differentiate yourself or do something you have to do something to differentiate yourself and to me that part of it alone taking that in the silo is not necessarily a bad thing i mean for the past decade plus, really, I mean, by and large, rates have been so low, you know, it's easier to squeak by on lower margins, what have you. You didn't really need to differentiate yourself. You could maybe not have the best prices, um, but... Uh, pe- basically, you could operate stuck in the middle, yep. you know what I mean, as you, as you learn That's from a good way to put it. various economics classes and other studies that you can beat in business one of two ways, either mm-hmm. on, uh, on price or on product and service. Yep. And we have had in our society, in our economy for a long period of time, any number of firms that are stuck in the middle. Can't not really, really com- doing either. Yeah, not really competing on price, not really competing on product or service, but they just kind of fill the void with mm-hmm. matter, if you will. Yep. And I think now, I guess perhaps the piper needs to be paid. And it's not unique necessarily to the restaurant industry. I mean, no, we've talked about it with... Same re- with department stores. We've talked about it with just real estate development. You yeah. know, it's like, eh, this isn't the best deal, but rates are low. We can yeah. make it work. Yeah. I mean, why not do it? Yeah. And, and that kind of sentiment, this, eh, well, you might as well. I mean, we can make decent money off of it, has started to change. Real estate, again, going back to that, I mean, you, there's still good deals to be had. If you yeah. differentiate yourself, you can create a good quality product and, and be successful with it department store probably the same thing in restaurants again i don't think it's necessarily a bad thing i mean these haves and have nots on the lower end uh, that i I mentioned i mean companies that are like kava i mean chili's is doing fantastic i mean which you told me that and i'm like how are they getting around it but more on that later i guess but these are companies that are either selling a product that people really want kava Mm -hmm. and this Fast casual, build your own bowl. I mean, all that is something that consumers really want in this healthy food trend. So they're being they're successful at it. I mean, Kava is now the most expensive per per store location restaurant chain in the in the U.S. Really? Yeah. So again, but if you're just going to be stuck in the middle, if you're going to offer a not 
that great product that's not differentiated and not at prices that reflect that kind of average product, yeah. it, it, it's, it's punishing. Well, and it's, frankly, it, I, it may sound harsh, but it should be punishing. You should not be able to just for decades get away with an average product at a not respectable price and continue on with that. Thank you all for listening. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, you know, and we're seeing that with a number of closures and what have you. Some of them are just really due to poor business decisions. I think the twenty dollar endless shrimp at uh, at, at Red Lobster was was punishing and not realizing uh, exactly how you compete. And they're trying to compete on price, and that's not necessarily what Red Lobster's business model was. But you're seeing a lot of companies actually really downsize quite a bit. It might not sound like a lot, but. For instance, I read somewhere that Denny's is going to close 150 locations. You know, that's not an insignificant number of locations. You know, I can go around town and see any number of crystal franchises that are, are boarded up. Mm-hmm. Um, McDonald's is, is shuttering um, the certain franchises. I mean, and when you kind of go around the horn and the types of restaurants that seem to really be struggling the most, as you mentioned, it's a sort of truly mom and pop one off type type restaurants or those chains that really have a very difficult time differentiating themselves. I mean when you think of Denny's, what do you think of? You think of the Grand Slam breakfast, right? Sure. Well can you make scrambled eggs and bacon at the house? Yeah. Yeah. I mean and let's face it, not 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 to knock Denny's, but Waffle House is the king really as far as I'm concerned in that type of space. And yet you still see Waffle House is going up. So how fickle is the American consumer, do you think? And how fickle, but really, is your generation when it comes to comes to restaurants? Because, frankly, it doesn't really matter with me. It really is people your age developing their brand identity that are going to choose the restaurants and that are winners and losers moving forward. It, it's vitally important, and you're seeing these new brands come out and trying to it, – it's starting with – our generation and focusing on growing our generation and kind of the next generations to come. I think these these salad bowl concepts, which I'm, I'm personally not a big fan of, but Norma. people love, I mean, that's a big target towards our, our generation. I mean, Cava, again, is a great example. Chipotle has been kind of the shining star of this space for a decade. Forever. I mean, yeah. for a long time. And so you're either having those, that's, that's where the fast casual kind of fast food industry seems to be going to where you can differentiate yourself. You know, McDonald's, we've talked about this before, about them saying, hey, we need to start focusing our, getting our pricing back down to, because they're not competing necessarily against, I mean, maybe slightly against a Chipotle, a Cava, but it's I mean, they're indirectly because there's only so many yeah, quick. Yeah, dollars but, dollars that the American consumer but, will spend But they should be competing at a different price point. Yes. I mean, if I'm going to go to Kava and get a Harissa chicken bowl with veggies and greens and all this stuff, I mean, that should probably be at a different price point than a McDouble and French fries, right? Uh, one would imagine. That's So co- these companies are being forced to compete in the, those areas. And then the third is the fast casual that's maybe a little nicer. It's, again, going back to a Chili's type thing. I mean, I saw an article that said, I tried this. The, the, that's their thing, this 1099 special. And they said there was... I don't know why I'd go back for fast food again. So they're competing at a price. And so all these companies that we're seeing be successful are the ones that are having some sort of unique, whether it's a price point that you normally don't get for a sit-down meal, whether it's a high-quality fast meal at a decent price, the Cava, Chipotle type, uh, or just competing, hey, we're going to provide food that you like. It's not the best thing ever, but we're going to have the prices that reflect that appropriately. Well, I think you're absolutely right on that. I think what we'll probably see, and I told my wife this, and I think I might have told you this as well. I've told plenty of people this, that uh, moving forward, because of the pressures that are on the fast, I'm going to focus primarily on the fast traditional fast food industry right now, because of the pressures that are on the fast food industry, you know, I think what we'll actually see is menu shrinkage as mm-hmm. opposed to menu growth. Now, you know, in the past, it's always, you know, restaurants have tried to expand their menu in order to keep up with change in consumer preferences. A few years ago, I remember McDonald's said they were going to start issuing, I mean, serving kale. 
no one goes to McDonald's to eat kale. Mm-hmm. I mean, what are you kidding me? Know do, your you, business. do you not know your business? Uh, and so I think that's what's going to happen. And you'll you'll will probably see, you know, less customization. You won't have as much ability to go, you know go in and say. Uh, hold the pickles, hold the lettuce, you know, that that type of stuff. This is what we serve. Mm-hmm. You you want a quarter pounder with cheese, this is how we provide it. You can you can scrape this off. But I do think that that's the way it's going to be because it, customization costs time and it costs money. And, you know, the margins on a lot of these stores, regardless of what people might think on Threads or X, aren't very high. Mm-hmm. You know, the average sort of fast food outlet will make for the franchisee. I mean, the numbers have been relatively constant for a long period of time. It's about $100,000 a year. Which, and that's on the upper end of it. And so you think about that, okay, yeah, that's good money, but for the amount of effort that goes into uh, maintaining a, a business, mm-hmm. you know, for you know, for an entire year, making payroll, cost of goods sold, and all that stuff, not necessarily a ton in absolute sense. So in order for a lot of these places to compete, just adding stuff to the menu, stuff that's being shoved top down from, from corporate, um, doesn't make a lot of sense. And so you will really see McDonald's focus more on burgers and fries, probably getting rid of some of the uh, super, super huge type deals and focusing on a value menu, with which is a small fry, you know, which is the McDouble, as opposed to come get the extra large fry and the massive soda. Uh, and it's going to be lower price points. And you're going to see a lot of these uh, places, traditional fast food, realize, hey, you know, we really do compete on price. And I think most, almost all of these companies we can talk about that maybe got bloated and started not competing at one point were competing on one of these two things. And it's this environment we've had largely where you didn't have to compete as much, where you weren't forced to compete as much. That's caused a lot of them to probably just be lazy, I guess. I mean, maybe that's not the best word, but you know, hey, Starbucks is another example that like they used to have They've struggled of late, but they, yeah, they have. I mean, they have gotten away from what their core business model was. I mean, we well, can talk about Wendy's. I mean, Wendy's was one that is the hot and fresh. I mean, the well, hot, hot and juicy, a, a qual, a more higher quality than the competitors was it's the no original. Di- no different than anything else. But and now exactly, and so all these companies that have competed at, at, on different things maybe have not been forced to compete and well, that, that's kind of created this kind of well, that's the whole deal i mean you bring a very good point we had originally anticipated uh, talking solely about restaurants but uh you know you made a point about businesses not knowing their business model and i, I alluded to it as well and you're absolutely right about that we mentioned mcdonald's you know we're not realizing that hey your brand now is you're cheap and you're relatively consistent that's it I mean, they, they, that's what your brand Same is. Decent food that's yeah, consistent. Yeah, I mean, no matter having where you parfaits go. and having all this crazy stuff. Eh, that's come on, you know. Um, and but when you take a look at businesses that uh, you know have deviated from the business model, I think Starbucks is a good one. Um, you know, I think Starbucks has pretty good coffee. I like it. But I'm not going to go to a Starbucks um, outlet and pay that amount for a cup of coffee uh, mm-hmm. with any regularity. I'll meet people there for a business function. You know, if they want to have coffee or, or something like that, as opposed to going out for lunch, I'm happy to do that. But, you know, when I can buy their beans at the Sam's Wholesale Club, yeah, it kind of reduces the brand. A little, it diminishes the brand a little bit. Yeah. I, I'd say the same thing happened with Victoria's Secret. I mean, Victoria's Secret, hey, Sam, Sam just gave me a look like, yeah, you're really going there? And I'm going to say, but, we, you know, we all know the problems that, that that company has had. And that's because when they started getting out of the higher end sort of items that they sold and started getting into selling the, their pink line, you know, their pajamas and stuff for teens and preteens and all that stuff, it diminished the brand. And so all of a sudden it wasn't, hey, uh, this is this is upper end stuff for women. This is now eh, kind of cheap clothes for everyone. And that's that's really the message here. No matter where you go, those companies that seem to be having a prob- the problems like that, shuttering a lot of doors out there. You know, some of it is management on the on the on the lower end. Uh, and some of it is just mom and pop can't compete. But when we have those chains which are really struggling, almost always is they don't understand someone in management doesn't understand what their brand is and how they're supposed to be competing 
Yeah, and, and then the inflation that we've experienced probably hasn't helped that either. No. I mean, that's pushed. I guess it's really just exposed it, it's, frankly. It's exposed it, and, you know, if you're trying to keep these margins in a, in a business where you're selling on being the lowest cost, largely, it's not really helping you out a, a whole well, lot. Well, I mean, to, to, that, to that point, you know, John and I, my, John, my son, and I went to a— Went to have lunch yesterday. We went to a sandwich place, and this one shall remain nameless. Although I've been throwing names around like crazy, but um, but you know you could take any sub shop. For all intents and purposes, this is a a sub shop of sorts. Um, I got, got, got their version of a club sandwich um, and potato salad. John got Doritos. Both of us got a drink. Um, and with the tip that I feel sort of like I'm there going to spit on my food if I don't yeah. give it. You know, it's a uh, it was like thirty six bucks, thirty three dollars. Um, which is a fair amount for lunch. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. I mean, I typically go home for lunch if if, I've, if there's something good in the refrigerator, but that's a decent amount for lunch. And you pointed out to me that I could have gone to Chili's. You could have gone for Chili's, sat down, had someone serve you, had an entree, appetizer, and drink for ten ninety nine a person. Yeah, or I could have, the same thing I could say for the Cheesecake Factory up there at the summit. Their their burger point is like fourteen ninety nine, so I could have gone out to eat at some of these places, and actually had a dining experience. Now we didn't have the time to do all that, but that the point is what I'm trying to say is a lot of these places, a lot of these sub shops and what have you, are at that fifteen sixteen dollar price point. Even a lot of fast food places are mm-hmm. not realizing that hey, I understand you got to maintain your margins, but you don't realize the lane in which you're supposed to be driving. Yeah. And so when you get up to in from fast food into sort of that upper end of the fast casual, you are going to have a lot of problems, my friend. And I'll, I'll give you an example. This, this is how I think about it and how I think a lot of people my generation think about it. What, take, take your favorite. For me, it's probably kava in terms of, hey, I don't have anything at the house. I want to go pick something up, yeah. get home, not spend a ton of money. I can get out of kava for $11 rounding up for a fantastic – what I – view as a fantastic meal so i'm comparing every other place i could go to that and you mentioned this place you went to i'm gonna spend close to double that for me what current charcoal girl no 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 the sub shop oh yes i'm gonna spend significantly more doing that than i am going to pick up what i know i'm going to love at kava i'm never gonna do that I'm never going to these places that are fifteen to twenty dollars when I can get something for fifty to a hundred percent or twenty-five to fifty percent cheaper that I know I'm going to like better. Frankly, feel better after all these things, and so <laughs> it, it is. Me. It is taking so many restaurants off the table for me that I don't even think about going in that in that space. If I'm going to go something, I'm just going to get food and go home. There's a whole swath of restaurants that are no longer in, in, in the list I would even think about going to. And I don't you, think that's... You care to name, name any of them? I could name... I think we could spend 20 <laughs> minutes naming them. So, but I did mention that sub shop. Um, you know, and I, I think that, that particular one, and I told you what the name of it is, um, is going to struggle uh, moving forward. And I wouldn't be surprised if at some point, um, you know, there aren't as many of them around. Because I can tell you that at 12, uh, 12 to twelve thirty uh, yesterday, in Vestavia Hills, Alabama, eating at this store, it wasn't a, it was half full. That's that's their time to shine. You know, that's mm-hmm. lunch. It's you a know. lunch spot. Yeah, it's a lunch spot. Um, however, I've been to other sub places, and notably um, the Pot Belly in South Park in, in Charlotte. We don't have we don't have a Pot Belly in Birmingham yet. Uh, but my experience at the Pot Belly in Charlotte is, I've, hell, I'm, I'm thinking about going out and buying one. I mean, it's just. That food is dynamite. I mean, just absolutely. You go get the wreck at Pop Belly, and you tell me that's not a good sandwich. And it's the same. It was actually a little bit less than that sandwich I had yesterday, which was so mm-hmm. average. Yeah. And so you can still compete on these price points if that's what you want to do. But I wouldn't say that uh, you know, in terms of Pop Belly and some of these upper uh, other sort of sub places, you know, they're they're competing a little bit differently. It's mm-hmm. not on price, whereas some of these other sub shops, it probably is on price, and they just don't know it. They're yeah. still competing somewhere in the middle, and I think this is going to play out not just across the entire economy, 
but specifically in the restaurant industry, and we're going to have an enormous amount of shakeout. We're going to have new restaurants opening up all the time while others are closing their doors like nobody's business. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing that now, and this is going to be a trend that actually probably accelerates next year and the year after that. Uh, And it's going to hit a lot of those uh, brands or places that we grew up with uh, to a certain degree, fast food places, and then those fast fast casual places, which really just are kind of middle middle of the road. Now, you mentioned, you know, Chili's is having banner time of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're doing fantastically. Conversely, you take a look at some other places like TGI Fridays is struggling right now. Right. Um, take a look at uh, Cracker Barrel closing units. Take a look at a whole bunch of others, places that are, are closing, and you kind of wonder why, huh, how is this happening? And I would just counter with the fact that Chili's knows its business model and is executing at a very high level on it. And oftentimes these other places just simply don't, don't, don't get it. That's all it is. It's pretty simple. All right. Well, guys, I'm not sure exactly how much we uh, accomplished here today, other than my giving a big shout out to the current charcoal grill here in uh, Birmingham, Alabama. If you listen to the sound of my voice, I can't recommend it highly enough. Uh, it's just fantastic. What do you think I think about that place? I think you like it. Yeah, I did. Um, <laughs> so, but we always love to hear from you all. So if you have any comments or questions, please, by all means, let us know. You can always reach us at uh, Trading Perspectives at Oakworth.com, or you can leave us a review on the podcast out of your choice. Also, if you're interested in reading more or hearing more of what we got to say or how we think, you can always go to oakworth.com, O-A-K-W-O-R-T-H.com. Take a look underneath the Thought Leadership tab and find access to all kinds of exciting information, including links to previous Trading Perspectives podcasts, links to our newsletter slash blog, Common Sense, links to our quarterly uh, magazine slash analytical report called Macro Market, which is out there now. Uh, good issue, by the way. There are a couple of really nice pieces. Sam, you always do a great job. Piece by Ryan on China and the piece by um, by Chris on um, on the social media's uh, or social social media's impact on, on elections and the economy. Both really good this quarter. Uh, and then also we have out there underneath the Thought Leadership tab pieces by um, by Mac Fraser and the rest of the uh, funny, of the advisory services group. This is going on long enough. So I'm going to sign it off there and I'm going to tell you, Sam, do you have anything else to say on this exciting topic? That's all I've got. That's all I've got today too. Y'all take care. <laughs>